What's up guys, Matt with Bleep and Jeep here. In the last video, I showed you what can go terribly wrong if you have your trailer loaded improperly. Today, I wanna to show you why I don't cross strap. I did a video a while back showing how to tie down your Jeep to the trailer, or how I do it anyway. And I had a lot of people saying that you should cross strap, but today I wanna to show you why you might wanna think twice. If you're new here, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Our motto is to just entertain, educate, and prepare you to tackle any automotive task you thought was otherwise impossible. Let's get started. All right, guys, so I've always just imagined this in my head, but I thought, you know what would be better is to have a real life example on a smaller scale, of course. So I've tied this up in a cross strap, which most people would recommend you do for your Jeep, but I don't think that's the right way to go. In fact, the strap manufacturer actually suggests that you do it this way, front to back. And I think I know the reason. Let me show you why. So I've got this tight. This is not gonna go off. As you can see, you can go upside down, sideways, forward, backward. It is on there tight. Now, what happens a lot of times with straps? If you tow a lot, you know something goes bad. Either one tears, one breaks, one comes off. How does it happen? Well, there's a lot of ways. We'll talk about that in a minute. With a cross strap scenario, if you break one strap, it's all over. Not only is it all over side to side, but it's also over front to back. There is just nothing keeping your Jeep or your car or your vehicle on the trailer. Okay, that was a little quick. Let me do this one more time. So I'm just gonna cut one strap. We'll do it on the back this time. And here we go. One strap goes down, your whole Jeep goes down. And that's the problem in my eyes with cross strapping. Let me show you a couple more things I don't like about cross strapping, and that is depending on where you're mounting your straps, you might come into a situation where this strap is now affecting this strap. They're also rubbing on each other as well. When you cross strap, you also put your hardware in a bind in a way that it's not really meant to be used. That's meant to be pulling straight and not trying to cock everything at an angle. Same way on the axle end, depending on how you have that set up, it's meant to pull straight rather than sideways. Now these D-rings are pretty stout and they'll probably work out, but as you know, shackles and other implements aren't meant to be pulled on sideways with a side load. Another thing that can happen, not so much with this axle because I have this truss here, but without this truss, imagine just a solid tube right here and you hook it on over here somewhere and then you pull sideways well, what's going to happen that thing's going to slide across so a lot of people then will attach right here near the pumpkin and that just makes for an even more i don't know what would you call that all of your strapping is right in the center instead of way out towards the outside where it's the strongest if that makes any sense and last, I've seen a lot of people cross strap like this. If their trailer is too short, which you really need to get a longer trailer, but I've seen people come across the tire and they'll either hook to a lug or they'll go under the tire like this and strap. That's just dangerous for one. But number two, there's nothing now, if you were to do that on all four sides, there's nothing to keep your Jeep or your vehicle from moving forward to backward because the straps are just all the way out to the sides. There's nothing holding it moving this direction. All right, let's take a look at the way I would recommend strapping down front to back. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. You can turn it upside down, right side up, forward, backward, and that thing is solid on there. Now let's take a look at what happens when you cut a strap. it's still almost just as solid, 
but nowhere near flying off like it did previously. Now you may be asking yourself, why would you lose a strap? Well, in real life, it's not going to be wire cutters. In real life, you're going to have other situations. So in the past, I've had one of these metal hooks just flat snap and break. It actually broke right here at the bend. Um, another reason, maybe you just forget. Maybe you forget to tie it down real tight or whatever. Maybe this mechanism malfunctions and it comes loose on the trailer. Maybe it's old and brittle and it just breaks. The strap material itself just breaks. Maybe your trailer weld breaks. There's a whole lot of different reasons that you can lose a strap. And what I would definitely recommend is that you get some sort of strap with a positive secured connection like this. When you snap that onto your D-ring or whatever, there's no coming loose. Whereas these are the, the cheap ones and they're fine for some things, cargo and whatnot. But the problem with these is when they have slack in them and they will get slack, when they have slack, they'll pop right off. There's no positive connection there. These are so much safer. Now, if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below to Amazon where you can find these. Why would you have slack? When you're using a, uh, one like this, you may tighten it down super tight and you think it's really great. Well, if you are tying to the axle, let's say you lose some air in the tire. I've even gone over mountain passes where uh, one side is warm, the other side is cold, and all of a sudden you lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds of PSI in the tires. Another thing is your flex, your suspension. Um, not only do you have suspension in the tires, so let's say you hit a bump and those tires compress, this thing, well, if I can find a place, there you go, that thing, when those tires flex, that thing is just gonna come right off. Now let's say you go to the body. I don't recommend going to the body. Some people do though. Whenever that happens, you may tighten it down really tight. It'll pull the suspension down, but there's still more. There's always room, unless you're completely on the bump stop, squishing them tight. There's more room in that suspension for it to flow down or pop down, and then this hook will just come right off. So I do not recommend something like that, especially when you're towing or pulling something as precious as your vehicle. But not only that, it doesn't matter what you're towing, even if you are just got some crap on your trailer, you don't want it coming off and injuring another person. At 70 miles an hour down the highway, anything coming off your trailer can be deadly. Another thing I want to mention is a lot of people ask me, should I tie down to the axle or to the body? Well, in the past, I did both, but now I recommend to the axle. Um, there's some situations where you have a lot of body roll on your Jeep, but I definitely recommend going to the axle first and then securing the body roll afterward. Now, the problem with securing to the body only or the frame is that you are now pulling down the suspension, so you're wearing down the suspension, but not only that, is that strap is going to take a lot of abuse and that hooking system is going to take a lot of abuse when it comes down and then pops back up. Every time you hit a bump, it's going bam, bam, and pulling on everything. So one, there's a lot of wear and tear there going on, a lot of ways that it can pop off or break the strap. Two, you're wearing down your suspension. And three, if you have that much body roll on your Jeep, you really need to figure out some other thing to do because that much body roll is not even good in an off-road situation. You don't want your Jeep to be like a slinky. That's uh, not good, because then if you get side-loaded on a hill, it's just gonna flop right over. So you need to take care of that issue on the Jeep side. So I guess in that case, if you have a lot of body roll, my suggestion would be first strap down the axles and then add another strap, and that then is gonna prevent your body roll. Now when you buy a trailer, a lot of them won't have rings like this or good places to tie down a vehicle. So you need to think about that pretty quick. Um, you can buy these online. I think even Tractor Supply has these weld-on rings for your trailer. Make sure they're big enough and rated for what you're towing. And have a professional weld those on. You don't want to do that yourself if that's not something you're comfortable with. What you don't want to do is try to do this with your uh, strap 
that is going to put everything in a bind and that's what's going to break the metal. If you need to go here or here, you can, but you need to put something on like a chain or an axle strap, I think is the best way to do that. And that way this can go wherever you need to and not bind up the strap. Definitely don't want to be pulling like this or like this. None of those are good. And as mentioned before, if you're cross strapping, which I don't recommend, make sure you put that on the outside of something so it doesn't just slide across and loosen up. Now there's one thing I should mention and that is you should always follow your state laws. So if your laws in your state say that you have to cross strap, you should probably cross strap. Most of the time when I talk to people that say that you should cross strap, it's usually truckers talking about cross strapping cargo. Should you do that with cargo? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know anything about cargo. What I'm specifically talking about is strapping your Jeep or your car down to a trailer. Now cars are a little bit different. Cars are smaller, they're lower to the ground. You can strap the wheels, uh, the tires. Uh, there's different ways to accomplish the same goal. But specifically what I'm talking about is strapping your Jeep down to the trailer. That's where my expertise is. I have no idea about strapping cargo, so you're on your own there. But what do you guys think? I'm not the final say. I don't have all the answers. All I know is how the strap manufacturer recommends it, how I recommend it, but what say you? Do you prefer cross strapping? Do you prefer straight strapping? Do you have any horror stories about the two? Leave your comments down below in the comments box. I'd love to hear from you guys. Right or wrong, let me know what your thoughts are. And as always, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell, and we will see you in the next video.